Hello and welcome to another episode of the Collab Talk podcast where we discuss the convergence of technology, business productivity, and collaboration culture. <clears throat> and excited to uh, get the band back together here. But uh, yeah, so it's uh, we, got, we got the team there. Whoop. Hello, gentlemen. Good My day. co-conspirators today uh, in this uh, regular check-in, which we try to do every once in a while. I know it's been a while, uh, but our Sean McDonough, Senior uh, Solution Architect and Consultant uh, with Akumina in Cincinnati, Ohio, and also an M365 Apps and Services MVP. For a while. Yeah, longer, anyway. yeah, yeah for, for right now. Uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, Jeff Roski, also a Senior Architect for Insights and the co-founder of the new Janky Workshop on the tube of use. Welcome, gentlemen. Yo. And Zyla Foxlin, friend. <laughs> is that the, the name hey. of the music project? I always forget. I've got you like bookmarked in there. <laughs> Who's that? No, Zyla no. Foxlin is, uh, she's a very interesting character. Jeff I, it sounds more like a rare form of pancreatic cancer or something. <laughs> she is not that. <laughs> no, nah, she's, she's, Kind of a what would you call her, Jeff? A maker or a... yeah, she's a, a engineer maker. Um, she builds rockets and other weird stuff. Um, and uh, made her a sign for her new workshop. She's like got half a million followers um, wow. on YouTube. So she's, she's kind of big. Very cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's I I often run into that, and I'm sure you guys do the same thing. Where I'm just like, how have I not found this creator this blogger this podcast or whatever it is and run into it and like oh they've been doing it for years uh yeah you know, and uh oh it's like like every other person who finds my content you're like oh you're doing this good for you <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> golf clap yeah well, this is our, uh, our our sort of regular check-in on stuff that's happening out in the, the space. It's been, uh, I know there were a bunch of announcements this, this spring that were very heavily focused on, oh, I don't know, Copilot maybe, uh, a, a lot of those things. Um, and it's been relatively quiet in the more of the information management collaboration space. I think they, I mean, what was the most recent exciting SharePoint related thing? Was it? The SharePoint embedded that announcement, that availability. Uh, SharePoint twenty three thirteen server. Uh, yeah, that was so. There twenty sixteen was sort of exciting. What are you talking about? True. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, what was the last the last big news around that? Because that we heard about embed. What was that last fall? Yeah, because that's. I mean, embedded is. I don't, I've been looking at embedded for, I want to say over a year now. Yeah. Uh, in some form last time we met with, uh, Microsoft's internal folks. So good times. Well, but it seems like everything has been on, has continued to stay in the lack of any other news on uh, co-pilot because everything's yeah. been co-pilot. Uh, most of the sessions I'm seeing and, you know, everybody now is, to the point where they are speaking co-pilot, they talk co-pilot, want to use co-pilot, and not to give away a coming surprise, but now that we all know who and what co-pilot is, is that going to remain consistent or is Microsoft going to change all of that? Hmm. <laughs> Just looking in, um... Yeah, sorry here. I just uh, I just thought of this too. Like that, the, there was actually I'll share my screen here. Um, in the Nobel prizes, I think the like the big winner. I got to find it in the, this. I mean, this is chemistry. In chemistry, really? really? No, no, no. There was an AI related like right up front of the Nobel Prize. I, I was going to go read about it. Um, yeah, chemistry. My daughter would be interested in that. I'm less. I'm naturally interested in that. Interested in that. Um, so. Oh, I guess that was it. It's the to investigate the structure of, of proteins. Maybe that is it. That it's hmm. chemistry. Um, yeah. So that's something I need to go and and look into. So it was kind of I heard the news briefly. I guess we could find the where's the Excuse the me. news events. Anyway, I'll have to go dig through and find that um, later. Uh, but the fact that you know uh, it's AI builders that are at the top of that. And somebody on the radio this morning showed that I follow. 
uh, Armstrong and Getty that I highly recommend for anybody uh, that they're just uh, uh, wicked smart and super funny. I've uh, been listening to them for about 30 years. Hmm. Um, but wow. they, they made the mention of this might be one of those things where we look at it and say, wow, it's incredible what they've gone and built with AI. And that 20, 30 years from now, I look back and say, are those the guys that did that AI discovery, which led to the, uh, <laughs> the singularity <laughs> that caused <laughs> the, the issue, whatever it was. Um, but, uh, yeah, anyway, yeah, it's lo lots of news around AI out there. Yeah. There seems to be these days. It's not oh, unusual. The other new feature, by the way, of us moving the uh, the the podcast over. Check this out, guys. Woo! Ooh. Ooh, yeah. And to be fair, I am never. I haven't touched my account in eons. <laughs> yeah, but still, but it's there. I kind of am that way too. So you could trash talk for um, uh, yeah. either of these gentlemen on this, and they won't know for quite some time. <laughs> it's quite possible. Yeah. I mean, Elon has made it so miserable to be over in that neighborhood of the net these days that i just you say that i say the opposite i said most of the crap is gone from the platform now i think it's fantastic now, what they've done is they, they've limited with the blue badge it's harder if you're not a blue badge to see a lot of of content but as far as bots like almost gone and uh, so i think it's just it's a vastly improved over the since before he purchased it so yeah mm. depends mm. on your perspective i guess but we, you can also find past episodes of the podcast out uh there on youtube as well um lots out there but uh with that the other major news uh i think we should talk about up front because it's massive and impactful and i'm surprised that the word is not uh been uttered by either of you as soon as we went live with this we were chatting about it before um but is of course <laughs> yeah this is a, a particularly timely one just because it came up in conversation oh, wow. work I was doing. <laughs> oh it did it, it wait no it did it are you joking or did it literally no, no, no. come up <laughs> literally, oh, okay. it legitimately claim came up because you know we talk about we talk about Akuma's feature set and we talk about where information comes from and whatnot. And many of Akuma's widgets, which are you know, a widget is equivalent to a web part for lack of a you know better way to put it. A widget, a mo we have a number of personalization widgets that pull from what we continue to say as, you know, we pull from Delve. And I'm like, and I, you know, took a, a link to one of the articles saying, hey guys, you realize that Delve is going to be end of life it's like december of this year uh it began last year in december 2023 um and it's you know a lot of us were familiar with delve but we it tends not to be a stop on a day-to-day -day basis um and so i think now microsoft i'm not sure if that the the capabilities provided by delve are simply going to be subsumed in other product lines or if they're going to somehow try and rebundle it as something else, I haven't heard any word on that. I, I mean, that's the that's the question. It's it's. Uh, I mean, it's not just a now. Hey, you need to go change your API calls. I mean, it's it's right. a, a bit more than that. If if you have customized, built any solutions or or partners to go and do this, I mean, you're having to go. I mean, right here, you know, to transition to Microsoft Search, of course, from that that search side of things um you, you've you have to look at collaboration as well as governance and security across each of right. those so uh, yeah there's some work to be done i didn't even think of it from an isv standpoint hmm. yeah yeah so i mean you know delve replaced what we had for what sharepoint my sites and then OneDrive became the official my site file so location that was your my documents folder and your um my site within SharePoint and now basically Delve's being pruned off. So it'll be interesting to see if the feature feature set lives on elsewhere um, as something else or just gets shuttered altogether. I, I, I think there's already, I mean, part of this, and I'm, I, I'm sure it was a factor played into that that just, but as you, as you look at what's happening with, uh, with AI capabilities, 
Um, is, is it just that the 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 newer co-pilot powered features as part of like the wave two announcements are replacing the need for that separate older technology? Is that part of what's going on or or it would be good to know. I mean, I I, I would like to see, you know, kind of a side by side comparison between Dell and, you know, what we might get with uh, co-pilot enhanced services elsewhere. But um, I, I don't know about any plans other than just the fact that this is getting the plug pulled at the end of this year. So that's enough for me to plan for it. Jeff, are you at a loss of words too about Dell? Um, or? I'm still trying to cope with it, really. It's, uh, I mean, I'm going to need some time. With it. <laughs> I, we did have funeral services for Infopath shut down. So I, I don't know what the community has planned for it, Delve, but I that's... think Infopath was a little more prominent in the public eye. <laughs> How dare you, sir? How dare you? <laughs> like AC said, Infopath is two four letter words. So remember that. <laughs> yeah, true. That is true. Can confirm. Uh, another big one was uh, uh, the, the big announcement uh, yesterday um, around the uh, new OneDrive. And forget the other thing that was big about yesterday. Jeff, Sean, uh, anything come to mind? Tuesday? Uh, my birthday was a week before that. That's yeah. So that's that. That's the indicator right there, Jeff. Is, um, <laughs> is you guys are like my family. Several years of my life and my teen years where they completely forgot oh, it was geez. my birthday. Are you kidding me? Really? Oh, happy birthday! Thank you. A day what a lovely and this caring family. family. <laughs> To be fair, I was away at college when I was 15, and so it, I understand that they completely forgot because I was, you know, two states away when yeah, that happened yeah. the first the first time. Hashtag right. humble brag. I was you're, in college. You're, when I was you're, you're more than a few states away from me, so yeah, uh, mentally and spiritually, but yeah, yeah. state of mind away. I figure you're only a short hop, but you know. So I'm not. I, did you guys participate in the uh, announcement? festivities around this yesterday or see this did you read anything about it no this is so apparently oh. at the OneDrive event they unveiled a powerful lineup of new features designed to help you work smarter stay organized and relive life's best moments yes through OneDrive uh, yeah. all through the magic of AI. So, uh, yes, yeah, so there's all video stuff, which the sound isn't connected here. So we're not going to go look at that. Um, but part of that announcement, which was part of the wave two announcements, which we'll get to in a minute here, um, was around the co-pilot agents. Um, so co-pilot agents are coming to OneDrive. So these are, think of the co-pilot agents as a custom built AI assistant designed by you and tailored to meet your specific needs and then kind of a walkthrough and how it works. So you create the assistant, automate and simplify repetitive tasks. Um, and then of course you can build this, you know, this agent and share it and leverage it across teams, OneDrive and SharePoint. And so, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on there, but with OneDrive, Probably the thing that stands out the most for me, and one thing. So my wife is a Mac user, and we were we had a conversation, um, like a lot of families, where we have two children that were born during the photograph era, mm -hmm. and two that were born during as we moved to the digital era. So we have all of these pictures from the older two kids when they were little in every phase, and then the first couple years of the younger two kids. And then there's no physical pictures because everything moved to digital. So we have tens of thousands of digital images that are sitting in various storage uh, uh, devices. And what years were they taken and di different things to go and classify like it's, it's a mess. And so one thing that uh, for iOS is there's been features for years on being able to go into more easily organize, classify the, those images, sort through those. 
and one dry were getting a big uh, uh shot of uh, adrenaline in the arm with like similar capabilities so some intelligence about be, be able to go in classify organize those memories so in addition to getting my little daily prompts in my window saying hey what were you doing on this day in years past which sometimes makes for really funny tweet material um <laughs> you know this to be able to go in and better to clean up and catalog and as again what i'm sure most of us have to do is sort through all of the uh need to be deleted digital images and just pick out the ones we want to keep effort but that's that's one thing so uh that that's coming uh because we already knew about the colored folders how mm -hmm. many of us are using colored folders Jeff is colorblind, so it doesn't matter to him. They're all gray. All folders are evil. <laughs> I like Manila. Um, so be able to go in and, you know, customize folders with colored folders. Wow. Wow. Um, and then getting more data out of it. Um, so Copilot and OneDrive be able to transform the way that you interact with your files so you can do things like summarize a file quickly find out data on things um so to be able to when you're searching for something and need to rely on more than the title uh, or how it may have been tagged or where it's located where it has the the ability to actually pull some information out of the content and so you get even more relevant search on that material um, but to, to do uh file comparison um and uh yeah so there's a there's a lot around you know the security side of it and the long-term management of that and then archiving so a lot a lot of stuff happening in onedrive i need to go back and watch besides just skimming the article go watch the video the formal announcements i'm sure there's some things that we might have missed although we are as we just showed completely thorough and accurate Always, always, always. definitely. So you can use Copilot to summarize the video for you. That's right. You, you could. And then I could summarize. <laughs> I said, you know, give me a summary of this entire episode in one sentence. And <laughs> yeah, thank you. I still want my favorite um, cartoon that I've seen about AI in general. It just is hilarious. It's, it's two panels and it has on one panel um, looking this this way, there's a person sitting in front of a computer and their manager um, standing above them also looking at their screen. The person saying, isn't this fantastic? I could take this, this entire uh, long message or Word doc and I can summarize it in three bullet points for a concise email. And then on the other side, looking the other direction is a person with the manager standing above says, I love AI because it can take these three simple bullets and uh and expand it into complete narrative tell a story or it was the other way around but anyway the point is they were basically you know i i think that's what it was it was uh look i can take these three bullets create this now i've screwed up the whole joke about it but you don't you don't understand what i mean like, i can take these three bullets and i can put this whole you know compelling narrative together and send us an email and the other person saying i can take this long-winded email and condense it to three bullet points i love ai point yeah. is everybody loves ai for helping them do their jobs that's hilarious bulk it up or thin it down yep let's see what else so we had the um i guess the wave two announcements uh and there was a few things that were in there this was happening this was launched uh was this the week of the power platform conference no dates are not it was like uh, a week or so ago wasn't it two weeks ago maybe well it says right there september 16th so it's, oh. it's been been a couple of weeks but okay. i'm just trying to think if that was during the um power platform conference in vegas vegas yeah, yeah it was so that was the that was the monday beforehand right but anyway Sounds um, about right. that was the that was the announcement that was the big news there at the conference I was, uh, you know, uh, chained at the heel to a, uh, a booth. So I was in the expo hall the entire time, but, um, it was, uh, so I, I was asking people 
coming out of the keynotes. I'm like, all right, tell me, you're like your thoughts, like what stood out to you? And any guesses on from the announcements of the only thing that people mentioned? Like there was a couple little things, but the main thing people mentioned. Well, aside from Dell being sunsetted, uh, Python and Excel probably <laughs> huge. What about the Excel flight simulator that was added as an Easter egg? Wait, what? <laughs> Have they done that you again? <laughs> no, nah, they did it a while back, but I think it was like the nineties. I thought you that. could still get two thousand. I think you can. Okay. I think it was maybe it's the early two thousands. I think this is when I first thought about that, an older version of things. No, no, no. It's the rebranding. The, ah. the that, that was the thing that people talked about the net the, the most was the rebranding. And, and how confused they were. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but well, like it wasn't confusing before, but you're calling everything copilot. Yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> anything from here is going to do better differentiation, I think, but um, I don't well, know. D what's Microsoft's stated purpose for the rebranding? Just to differentiate? I, I think that's part of it. They realize that there's a lot of confusion with internally, because you think about it too, it's like a, it's like a soap opera where I think if there was an initial plan and then when they got into it, the writers were just writing to the characters, like mm -hmm. the individual teams. They weren't thinking about how does this all roll up? And have wow. we just alienated half of our audience by confusing the hell out of them with, yeah. with this? And I think, so this is like kind of a reset of that. So here's an example. There was a lot of the branding around like uh, Copilot for Microsoft 365. And then all the subsequent productivity products and stuff that are under that, like Copilot for SharePoint or Copilot for Word, Copilot for Power for yeah PowerPoint. Right. So now instead it is, um, you know, it's like uh, Microsoft 365, uh, you know, Copilot, um, you know, yeah. So they so they've they've done it away. Did I did I get that backwards too? I'm telling the joke backwards. To go down and look in here um i've talked about this like yeah so copilot in excel mm -hmm. um so I so now, now you have the brand excel here Python. 365 copilot and then you know copilot in excel copilot in you know in each individual product productivity solution um but again it was that that idea that like, hey, there are um, they they want to now refer to uh, some of the copilot branding around chat as business chat or biz chat, um, and so they're just trying to differentiate of the different types of AI solutions and not just generically call everything copilot. Um, but that was the the big. <laughs> you know, as, as big as that is, um, mm -hmm. they're making an adjustment there so that it is <clears throat> clear that, um, it's, it's more as a, you know, a feature inside the product, not as another, a standalone product. If that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you have more like the, the announcement around copilot pages. So you have that, that canvas app, development experience for copilot and do more um so to go and build you know and this was the formal announcement on the 16th around copilot agents have you guys played around with this or what are your thoughts on agents i have not i have not either <clears throat> so the way that i was thinking about that oh we just lost, lost jeff. jeff altogether <laughs> No, that was it. That was it. It was his thoughts. I've not looked. He at was it. offended by the question, Christian. I can I'm clearly done. see it in his eyes. I I'm out. <laughs> and yeah, no kidding. There's Jeff. There we go. Hi. Like both you guys disappear. What the heck? <laughs> well, he disappeared because he he had technical issues. I turned off my camera as a joke. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. Why am I only here? Yeah. Which yeah. is great for the people that are just uh, on audio only. It's like, yeah, we're playing with cameras here, folks. Um, <laughs> yeah. Picture in your mind's eye. 
if you well will. the thing that i thought of the first like for for the last uh you know year year and a half playing with chat gpt is one of the things that i have been exploring on my own is the is building out gpts so training bots essentially to go and program them a certain way it's it's you know think of a gpt as it's a it's a pinned um you know a, a prompt so i can train it so that it always it for a new prompt it it asks me an initial question and then it has its pre-programmed structure you know the multi prompts that i want it to follow and here's the format of the answers it provides back every single time so i don't have to go in with the new prompt mm -hmm. and re-enter all the prompts um i can go to my gpt and ask you know, enter the information and it gives me that format every single time um like i started out um the first one that i built was i want um every every response to be in the format of duran duran lyrics <laughs> <laughs> so it would kind of make it a little more poetic and certain keywords it, that it would try to find ways to insert things in there and stuff so that was my first experiment but the thing that so i thought of that with gpts when i was trying to understand copilot agents around this is that it's so it's it, it's more complex series of so it's it's still natural language you know generating uh you know that your code for that programming that intelligent agent to go do that action but it can be much more complex and you can have agents that can recognize and call upon other agents depending on uh the, the request so that's that's the way that i thought of of copilot so it's again Microsoft's wording for a, a, a bot and bots or programs that call on other agents and take increasingly complex sets of actions. All this talk of agents has me thinking matrix. Well, I was thinking of it. And we've talked in the past about um, like back when I was doing supply chain stuff, which is this idea of a service bus. You've got a, you know, disparate systems that are plugged in and that you have this service bus that acts, acts as middleware and converts uh, your requests coming from each system and output to each system into a common language. And back in the day, like that could have been, you know, UML based or, or XML based for this supply chain solutions. So there's a common language to communicate in between the different pieces, but yeah, and that's something that agents will be able to do as well, that you'll have your interface and it will then go and activate one or more agents to go and do those tasks that have been set up. So I like, I like that. Yeah. The agents kind of sound like they um, carry out the chain of responsibility uh, software pattern from the gang of four, if you go back a bit where you know you get new sources and new things and the tool chain is smart enough to recognize them and shunt the requests for different types of data or different questions to different pieces of the the ongoing chain of responsibility so yeah it makes sense it sounds cool mm -hmm. yeah i think you're going to see a lot more content out there videos and and sessions at conferences around copilot pages and going and leveraging that in that environment so that, of course, was was interesting to folks, and this fits in with the whole, uh, you know, low code development, you know, wave that we're on with Power Platform and now Copilot. Yeah. Um, but again, I go back to as a non programmer developer to be able to use natural language to go and it, for it to uh, even even ask the AI to help you in the creation of the logic to build out a complex workflow or build an agent. Um, I think we're very close to achieving that goal. I'd agree. Yep. Very groovy. So that stuff, there's some other new features and things around the various products. So you go take a look at that. We're not going to go to, into all of those things, but, um, 
Yeah, so that was the the big announcement uh, about the Wave 2 of Copilot. I think the other thing that stood out to me is that you know Microsoft is also recognizing that um, users don't want to have, like, in each product, just have, you know, the Copilot experience being you click on the icon, it opens up over on the right side in a panel. Yeah, and that pain. You're asking questions about that, but have more of an integrated native experience where you again through the use of agents which you can set up as a button that's up in your you know up in the uh, the, the the ribbon uh, you know up in the top nav um, and, uh, and and likewise Microsoft is pre-building you know features and capabilities um, that are AI powered co-pilot powered um, but it's just putting an interface on the front end of uh, a series of complex prompts. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which, yeah, it's, you know, I was thinking about this this week too, is that, you know, there's like the data that I think is pretty common knowledge now around uh, like menus for a restaurant. And you know that the more complex the menu, then what, it, if people have too many options, it actually reduces the number of selections if that makes sense yeah. um so like there's an optimal side of a you know a, a number of uh of of menu items or like in a survey you know the the fewer questions that you ask on a survey then the the number of people that respond to a survey goes up mm -hmm. so trying to keep that simple um and i think that is you know similar logic that went into thinking of rather than give people this open-ended interface like that'll always be there like you'll be able to go in build prompts be very specific about what you want you can of course go into the back end use powershell um and do do other take other actions look for exactly what you're looking for um but it just makes sense to have common scenarios built out it's like building you know a a, a building out search within your company portal there's a certain certain amount of it that you want to be able to do the most common scenarios, build it in so people can quickly refine, get to the common requests, still give them a search bar. Yep. Then let's see, uh, what else do we have? So this was the, oh yeah, so this was the uh, Office 2024 announcement. I, I saw that you guys were a lot of chatter out there online. <laughs> from both of you around office 2024 yeah, I couldn't stop they, going. they gave it uh they dropped it on my birthday so you know i was i was really happy about that. what a present I, that's awesome i know i know it was it was amazing i i still have to write thank you cards to the, <laughs> everybody in the entire corporation office apps the new janky edition <laughs> <clears throat> So there's another one where I've not looked at all the detail, like skimmed across that, of like thinking of like performance and speed of that, you know, like I've been using, I mean, honestly, I've been using, you know, browser versions, the, the M365 version of, of most of the apps for the longest time. I'm not using desktop apps as often mm -hmm. as I was. Um, there's certain things like PowerPoint, you have to, you lose half the features, uh, you get frustrated by, by doing yeah. things, move it to the desktop. Yeah, I still make heavy use of the client apps because many of the things I do, you know, like adding notes to a cell in Excel and whatnot, there's no uh, there's no good analog or alternative in the web space for that right now. So yeah, that, that keeps the client apps alive on my system. But I do a fair bit of going back and forth between them. Yeah. If I'm, just viewing, if I'm just viewing, I'll do that. But otherwise, I open in the app. But I mean, the other side of this, though, is that I, I know some people just get stuck on the fact that it's like, I don't want to pay for a monthly subscription for and then have it constantly up. Like, I don't care. I like I, there are people that are still on, you know, a version of Office from 15, 20 years ago because it works. It does what they need. They don't need something more. Yep. So to still be able to go in like you could actually buy a <clears throat> version with whatever features are there and use it as long as your PC ru runs. Right. The old ain't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it sort of mentality. So, but having some of the, I mean, obviously the benefits of using the, 
um, the cloud enabled version. So the, 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 those versions of it, that, you know, having links to things like Copilot that are out in the cloud to be able to, to do you know, features that move across the various applications. So Copilot and Loop are two examples that you have to have the cloud to be able to, you know, Make utilize the full functionality. Yeah. Totally makes sense. Yeah, so that I think that was that was it. Get back and out to do my research there on the uh, on the Nobel Prize too. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna have to that. check sure that. Especially, I'll I'll I'll, I'll, you, I'll share the link uh, in the notes and stuff on the blog post around that once I find the info. Yeah, I mean, since we're looking at a Nobel Prize, it's an overlap of you know technology and chemistry, which basically is my life. You know, I'm very interested in seeing what was done there and um, what they did to warrant Nobel attention. Yeah. Is there anything else coming up that either of you are aware of that we're waiting to hear more about or that you want to go and do some research on? Hmm. Like it's been really quiet. Yeah. For well, yeah. Cause I think, well, well for, we haven't know, had our podcast, so that's why it's been really quiet. That's right. Well, they've yeah. been sure. waiting, wondering what are we going to talk about next. And everybody's well, been on vacation since June, so yeah, you know, there's, there's that. that to contend with. I'm yep. still on vacation permanently. Always. That's right. <laughs> well, I know that's the man to contact when I need to just get out. That's Jeff. <laughs> I'm heading to the Northeast, folks. But with that, well, it really, again, as always, thank you, gentlemen, for taking the time and going through. It's always fun to go through and pick <laughs> apart. Uh, I, I, oh, I, I completely forgot my other relevant topic. We'll have to hold it till next time to talk about uh, oh. one of my my wife's uh, uh, good friends from high school who now joined the cast of Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. <laughs> really? Yeah. And uh, part of it, it makes me a little bit sad because she, uh, her family is awesome. And she is like one of the nicest human beings on the planet. And so to, to, to go in and, and see her, uh, uh, you know, uh, ripped apart by other members of the cast. <laughs> oh God, like it, yeah. It, it, it's, uh, it's hard to not see some of the clips and, and uh, not be a, a bit hurt on her behalf. Yeah. Cause like we, we know her well enough to know like, like, Again, her, her family rocks. I, in fact, I worked for her dad for a summer um, just before I got married. So back in summer of 90 uh, in the Sacramento area. But yeah, anyway. Oh, yeah, so one, we'll have to get into know, this. One, I didn't know that that Real Housewives was still going on. And two, I didn't know there was a Salt Lake City one. So I don't know. Je Jeff, me. it's season five. <laughs> don't lie to me and say that you didn't know that. Hmm. And, uh, I, and I our, you're not alone, Jeff. Jeff. <laughs> I'm with you. Uh, I didn't know it was around that long either. So it's, yeah. <laughs> Does there need to be that show? It's like no. It's uh, yeah. it's garbage TV. It complete garbage TV. And so that's that's why I've like it's like the way I see it now that I I'm really I, I don't believe much that I've seen even from the clips. <laughs> um, but yeah, Sean, you you're gonna go find season five scenes to go watch now catch up he's gonna binge watch it tonight i would need the first four seasons i know what well, so i'm saying would you, though, would you is there really that kind of continuity between seasons no i think you could randomly Listen. select two episodes from each season and know exactly what's going on <laughs> the last time i tried to cover a series i was interested in watching it like binge watching style from start to finish i screwed up the series was The Expanse on Amazon, oh, yeah, which I loved all six seasons. The problem is, through some, <laughs> I'm going to say this and it's going to sound ridiculous, but dumb clicking, I guess, on my remote, because, you know, they make this so difficult for people to binge watch. Apparently, somebody in technology cannot watch the first episode of a, a, you know, a season, but <laughs> I started on the second season. I made it through the whole first episode going, there must be one incredible catch up that comes <laughs> after this or something. And then I'm like, you know, I see season two, episode two. And I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like, I missed the whole season. Okay. Well, that would explain things. 
I just yeah. finished watching uh, The Expanse uh, all the way through again. I actually, um, uh, there was an auction from uh, Prop Store um, that, uh, oh, yeah. um, and I got um, uh, one of Amos Burton's toolboxes from the I Red saw Red that. Red. I thought that was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's awesome. It's, uh, yeah, it was from the Ravetta Bowers, which was the ship that they stole in Lake Winnipesaukee and took back up into space. Um, so and that came, that followed him with him on the Rosinante and everything. So so yeah. I have to say that I've not watched any of it, but my wife has and was trying to get me to go watch it. It's it's uh, definitely just, worth it, Christian. I just haven't. Now, the one thing, like, you guys watching, like, you know that I'm, like, one of the world's biggest Lord of the Rings fans. And so mm-hmm. the Rings of Power, have yeah. you guys? I've like, not watched them, no. I my, will, I'll tell life. you that season two, much better than season one. It's been good. So the last three episodes... Um, in fact, my son and I are binge watching, like we held off and neither have I have watched. We're watching the last three on Saturday. Um, so, the, so in a, in a few days, but, um, yeah, it, uh, it's still, they've made creative decisions that like, dude, that breaks the book. Like, what, what are you doing? Like this and just stupid things like, um, like trying to bring humanity to the orcs. Like there's the orc family. Like, come on. Yeah. yeah. That's like, that's a little yeah. weird. Um, yeah. They're the Nazis yeah. of Middle Earth. Everybody wants to kill them. I mean, come on. Yeah. We're well, on... also also the fact that they're it's in the canon. Like they don't have kids that they're made. They're formed, not natural born. But, right. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yeah. We're my wife and I are on. Uh, we just finish episode six so we got two more to go yeah so yeah i've heard uh all i remember is like seeing it's it's hard to go into like youtube and you see uh i, I see because of my uh, watch patterns that it says like you know they the worst battle in lord of the rings history you know <laughs> of either animated or live uh was from some episode i guess the uh, uh the destruction of Aregion and yeah anyway so i, I don't know anything i'm just I need to, to go and watch it. But I, I will have to say that um, the storytelling improved. The pace is it, it's improved. The uh, I, I hate the Hobbits less this season. The Hobbits, uh, <laughs> yes. And uh, yeah, so it's it's overall, it's, it's, it's an improvement. So I'm, in, I'm enjoying it now. So good to hear. Yeah. And uh, I, I, and I'm a, you know, Anatar fanboy. So yeah. Yeah, I know how invested in that whole genre you are so yes love it so and oh and uh and the 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 new there's a preview out i'll have to put this into it's the what is it the the animated series uh let me see if it's is it writers of rohan yeah so the writers of rohan there there is a um a video let's looking for it here that's that's out there is that it it's it so the yeah, spinoffs are getting spinoffs. So there's an animated that comes out in December, mm-hmm. and it looks so it goes from the it, it's it you know, it goes back in history of what happened with uh, uh, with Helm Hammerhand, and so it actually has him and Helm's Deep, the original battle there, and kind of all the, like the background, but the all fellowship. animated, but it's it's still Peter Jackson led, so it's done really well. Okay. And, it looks fantastic. So that comes out in December, but I'll, I'll find the video. I'll put that in the notes as well for the blog. So. Of course. Yeah. Awesome. Right. That's right. cool. As well as a link to the expanse. Of course. Yes. Yeah. The expanse. Yeah. It's my favorite, probably my favorite sci-fi show. Um, it, it took the, the top rung on there. It's really well done. And I'm pretty close to Jeff. I mean, the, the grittiness and the quasi reality of the space battles, you know, what on what um, show featuring space combat have you ever seen that they depressurize the entire vessel prior to going into combat? Mm-hmm. Because shots go straight through, and I mean, you watch this; it's like when they're fighting one another, it's it's downright gritty. They're in spacesuits; they're sitting at their stations, and you see, you know, tracers and bullets flying throughout by their head and whatnot. It's it's really incredible. Wow, yeah, that's awesome. Okay. Well, I I will promise you that I will watch the first two episodes this evening. Just watch of the, the first, first season. Season of the Start first season, season one. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I learned that lesson. I did it, learn, learn it, that it lesson. It gets off a little bit slow, but it's 
it picks up very quick. Well, I'd say that because yeah. I learned that lesson a while back. Like I, I think I've told you before. Like I, when I was in, this was actually back when 9-11 happened. I was in Japan, was supposed to come home on the twelfth. Oh, I ended I up not that. coming home until the thirteenth. Okay. Uh, because the delays, I was on the second flight out of Japan. Oh. Um. Uh. But I had purchased the fourth Harry Bot Potter book for the kids. Like we hadn't seen it yet in stores over in the U.S. And I bought a hardcover. So I'm sitting there in the airport for a day and a half. Um, <laughs> I read it. I'm like, this is fantastic. And then mm -hmm. it kind of wrecked book three. Uh, because you're thinking the whole time in book three, who the bad guy is. And it's not. Right. And I already knew that it wasn't. Like, why? Anyway, it wrecked it. Uh, <laughs> so I've learned that lesson. If you're going to try something like the start at the beginning in the first season. So you've got the background exactly yeah. do it the way they intended you to that's why you guys need to go read the silmarillion again so before you complain <sighs> about any of the lord of the Rings stuff i i was taking a melon ball melon baller to my eyes scooping them out trying to read silmarillion i've done it like two or three times and it's just it's name salad word yes, salad. it is it's, mm -hmm. But after you read it, I from personal experience, four or five times, then it all starts coming together. <laughs> you start to be able to see the matrix, Sean. I'm going to have to let you realize that gain. I'm just probably not going to follow in your footsteps. All right. <laughs> all right, gentlemen. Well, thanks so much. Of course, uh, everybody uh, out there, if you, uh, uh, I'll put it one last time here out there. You can follow us out on yeah. X. Again, you go search any, uh, any of our names. You'll find us out there. Um, Jeff, it's all woodworking related stuff. And occasionally there's something technical in there. Maybe. And then, of course, you can find back episodes of the Cloud Talk uh, podcast, the video series, and a whole lot more out on YouTube slash at Bucky Planet. So thanks for watching. Thank you, all gentlemen. Right. Good to be Bye. with you. Thanks again. You've been listening to the Collab Talk podcast. New episodes are published weekly, and you can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and most other podcast platforms. Thanks for listening.